Well, the vision for Messy Church here in St. Matthias, which I'm sure is similar to the vision for Messy Church in lots of other places too, is to, to engage young families in particular um, with being church and doing church in a new way. Messy Church gave us the opportunity that we, we can cater for all ages and we can bring all ages together. The other thing is that with Sunday Club and with, with Sunday School, we're taking the children out of the church somewhere else. And what we want to do is worship together. We want intergenerational worship. Again, Messy Church would give us the opportunity to do that. So as we looked at where we were and what we actually wanted to achieve, Messy Church just seemed like a perfect fit for us to bring it all together. So the title of Messy Church, what does, why is it called Messy Church? Well, I thought that it was called Messy Church because people make lots of mess. And of course, that is true, sometimes <laughs> we do make lots of mess. But that isn't the real reason for the title Messy Church. It's called Messy Church because we bring all the mess of our lives to that worship event. So whoever we are, in our brokenness, in our, in, in just in our humanity, we're bringing that to the Lord. So the first thing, which is always important, is welcome. And certainly in, in Messy Church, because there is this emphasis on, on the sort of breadth of our humanity, is that it's important that all people are welcome to Messy Church. Second part is the craft activities. And as I was reflecting on this, I realised that down through the Christian uh, ages, people have expressed their worship in all sorts of ways through sculpture, through painting, through jewellery making, through architecture, through music. Um, there's so many ways people want to express their humanity and their love for God, or just their spirituality. And the craft element of Messy Church gives people that opportunity to engage with a theme or a story and just to express themselves. Now, of course, we do other things too. We do some activities and games and that sort of thing too. But it is permission to bring all of who we are to the Lord and express ourselves. And then we take that work, as it were, that ministry, that creativity, into the celebration time, which maybe is the component that looks more like a, an all-age service or something like that. There's music and singing, and it's here in St. Matthias we have a box full of instruments that everyone's invited to take an instrument, maybe tambourine, maracas, whatever it is, <laughs> and make a joyful sound to the Lord, which is wonderful. There's Bible reading, there's prayer, and there's a short presentation um, on the theme. And then when we've had that corporate time of worship together, then we return for our hospitality, um, which is a meal, quite simply a meal. And what's special about that is that it is table fellowship. It is an opportunity to build relationship with one another over a meal. And of course, as we all know, the Christian tradition has a very, very... Um, big emphasis on table fellowship, on meals, going right back to the very earliest believers who broke bread with each other in each other's homes. Um, and sometimes they were called agape meals or love feasts. And I think that the messy church hospitality, certainly as we've cultivated it here under the, the wonderful leadership of our catering team, um, has something of that communion to it. Messy Church, um, for me, I've, I've watched so many people just get it, rolling up their sleeves and doing the stuff, and I'm just another member of the team. And that, that has felt enormously liberating, and, and I think it's just healthy. It's spread the load, and to put it into the jargon, you know, I've seen the priesthood of all believers um, functioning um, much more efficiently. Well, being involved in Messy Church in St. Matthias has been a great blessing for me. I've had the opportunity to see, to welcome people and see them come and see people grow in their faith even in a very short time, young people and old people. And those people who are involved in the team see a, di a different perspective. Um, I've seen the joy of watching people being able to express their faith and share their faith with other people. And that's not something I often get, you, you often get to see sometimes. People actually giving their own testimony and, um, and people you know, learning from that and growing from that. And it's, it's been great to see you know, the growth and faith of people. 
and, and I, th I think it's going to continue.